What's up guys, it's Damp. So, I'm going to talk to you today about the Grave Robber, and this video will be a little different from some of the other guides, in uh, that I'd rather talk about how to utilize her in a different way than, than I utilize all the rest of my characters, and how I can... I, I feel it help, it would help you really maximize your um, gold gain, as well as minimize the amount of time that some of your uh, your heroes are spent in stress conditions or, you know, in medical wards or things like that, because I think that's really where she shines. So I'm going to go through the guide similar to how I've done the rest of them, um, give you my thoughts and opinions on, you know, best trinkets, best quirks and things, but... She'll be a little different in that I'm um, not going to go off script. Or I guess I would say I'm, I'm going to go completely off script from what I would normally do when it comes to this particular hero. So we're going to start by saying that I do feel she is the best hero in the game currently. And I also think she's one of the devs' favorites, so I don't think she's going to be nerfed anytime soon. Um, I, I, and the reason I feel she's best is she generally speaking and general dungeon grinding is probably the most valuable so it's not that she hits the hardest it's not that she's completely broken or op i actually think she's strong and she's fairly well balanced um her trinket truthfully puts her over the top but her use of utility of scouting makes in my opinion she's number one overall currently um Hellion's still up there. I mean, a lot of people ask me what I think the, the meta and, you know, the top, the best hero in the game is. Um, Hellion's ability to hit the back row makes her very strong. Um, but if you, as you go through the list, there's a lot of people who can, a lot of heroes, rather, who can really speak for, for top five. Um, you know, the Vestal's super important as well. But I really think Grave Robber currently, as she sits, and this is early 18, I think she's probably the best in the game. So with saying that, let's talk about how to use her. So let's look at her combat skills. They're pretty versatile. Primarily what you're looking at with her when you're going to run a typical dungeon, not a boss fight, is the setup you see here. And I run, I like to run her in what's called a leapfrog party. So if you're new um, to the game or you don't know what that is, it's terminology that I typically use in most of my videos where characters will move forward as you see there, unlunge and or backwards, uh, kind of creating a leapfrog of kind of moving around and changing orders and positions. As you see here, that you'll change positions as you're utilizing her. So because I like to use leapfrog, speed's, speed's very important, as is crit. And, and I'll kind of go into that explanation. But you're taking pick to the face primarily for the utility and the use that you can hit you can be in the third row because you're going to be bouncing around a lot and still do damage to help finish off the um, guys in the front two rows. Because as I always tell you, I use her to um, focus the back two rows. That's why you see I took Eagle Eye, which I'll go into in a minute. Um, lunge is important just simply because you're going to be using this. It's a high crit, high damage ability for her. And it gives you the ability to eliminate third row in turn one. Similar to the Hellion eliminating turn four or row four on turn one, which can be extremely strong running those two together. So if you think about it, you Iron Swan and you crit or you get a high roll, that back row is already gone. Same thing can happen for her. Let's say she crits and immediately what happens is she ends up taking out the third row. Then you only have the front two rows. So... Then you really you could use anybody to really finish off the front two rows. Almost everyone can damage that, so that's why I'm taking lunge. I don't. I, I'd say use flashing dagger selectively. This isn't one you need to really. Yeah, I really don't think it has the love that a lot of people think it does. I see a lot of people run it. To in how I would utilize this if you guys are going to run it is use it to eliminate. Um, typically on turn two or turn three, you can eliminate this row you can finish this row off because you probably should have been doing damage to it and also damages the second row so that's when i would utilize flashing daggers um shadow fade it, it, i mean that's pretty simple typically you're going to lunge and then you're going to drop back with shadow fade give yourself a dodge buff and then you're going to come back with lunge again on your next turn um, again depending on how the fight's rolling out i mean there's always going to be different scenarios 
Uh, thrown Dagger I utilize to help finish off a fourth row if fourth row is really what needs to be eliminated. Um, or if, you know, there's only somebody in, in row four that you feel can be eliminated with one turn with her if you crit. Um, I start her typically in, in row four or row three during a fight. But if she's in row four, she can do the thrown dagger if it crits. Um, usually you're going to eliminate that turn. So I, I do bring thrown dagger. I don't run poison darts much. I don't think it's that strong. Although if you notice, um, you can hit the back row again with that. So keep that in mind. Um, so you can hit this row here. And then toxin trickery, it's a good buff. Like the 20 dodge and 20 speeds there, but you don't need it. If you're wasting a turn on a buff with her, you're wasting an opportunity to crit, which is going to reduce your party stress. You're reducing an opportunity to deal damage. So normally that's she's going to be completely offensive for you because you need her to run the crits, which I'll explain in a second. Um, as we go through and we look at quirks and the quirks I recommend, she's simple. Maximize and focus on her strength. Speed, um, dodge and crits. So you can see I took deadly for the overall 1% crit. Um, I took the crit ranged simply because of thrown dagger. That's the main reason I took it. Now the melee one would have been better. It hasn't come up for me yet with her and we're in like week 400. I think I've had her like or week 460. I've had her probably 350 weeks, but that has not come up. I'm hoping that it does because she, she would be broken that strong. But Melee crit would be far better if you can get it and if you have to pick between the two, just in my opinion. But I took it for Thrown Dagger because I thought it was a good opportunity to stack some of the crit. So, as you, again, for her, speed, crit, um, probably melee damage would be another one. Um, dodge is an option, but it, it, primarily melee damage, melee crit, th those are the ones I would start with first. And then deadly. So if you can get melee damage, melee crit, and deadly, you're, you're GG. That's amazing. That's the meta. Um, okay, so let's talk about Trinkets and why I feel she's the best character in the game. So this is the reason why she's the best character in the game. This Trinket is extremely strong, and I can't believe it hasn't been nerfed. Um, it's by far, by far, the best Trinket in the game. By far. The closest Trinket to it that's a second is... Just because, again, it doesn't have the negatives, is Surgical Gloves. So if you look at what she becomes with the amount of crit you're stacking, um, plus 15%, um, and that's not, this isn't, this is just, you know, quirk trinkets um, and overall her build. So 15% is <laughs> really good. And then this isn't going to count as a bonus simply because it only affects melee, but then put that in there. So that's extremely, extremely strong. This trinket's so good, it's it's ignorant, really. I mean, it, it's it, it's insane. So trap disarm, extremely important for stress reduction. Um, speed, that speed's important with her because it gives you more of a predictability for the leapfrog party, which is important. You can make her really fast and somebody else really slow knowing she's going to go first, which makes it better when it comes to timing of your patterns of how you're going to cycle her in and out of combat. Um, as you look at the scouting chance, extremely important, and the food, well, okay, yeah, that's a minus, but there's no additional stress, which is very strong. Uh, the food, though, just bring some more food. Who cares? She's fat. That's all right. She can be thick. Let it go. In, in looking at some of the other trinkets, there are other trinkets you can run with her if you don't have this one. I mean, you've got like the uh, uh, survival guide, which gives you scout chance and trap disarm, negative speed, which isn't great. I mean, but this is by far probably meta when it comes to uh, her melee abilities with running lunge and pick to the face. Just very, 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 very strong. So this is part of why she's the best character in the game. But on top of that... She has Gallows Humor, which is really, really good for her, her camping skills. And she has the ability to remove a disease from herself if she gets it basically for free, which are awesome. Um, as well as she can get an additional possibility to get a scouting chance. So part of the reason that she's so good is that her, her crit's so high. Just by bringing her in a party, you're going to get passive stress reduction by the amount of crits she's going to get you. 
the other part of it is you're going to get reduced damage, reduced stress, because her scout checks are going to come in. And her scout by having her scout checks, what that does is it allows you to pick and choose your battles or avoid you know, combat completely. And on top of that, she has a better chance to get the critical hit of what would be a critical scout where you get the room that you can go into and then you're collecting, let's say, either really good trinkets or you're collecting let's say 7500 gold which is amazing so that by far makes up for the amount of food she's going to consume in that run so long story short she is the best hero in the game as it sits currently um i really don't think there's a debate to that I, at all i don't think how there would be any debate how anyone would say man i can't believe you think that or somebody would be shocked by saying that but her versatility her ability to scout disarm the traps Minimize your stress, her passive stress reduction. Um, I, I mean, I can't say enough good things about her. So when it when it comes to some of the other things with her that that you may want to consider as far as party combinations, her and the Hellion are are really good. But if you're gonna bring her, usually you're not gonna bring another person like a Houndmaster for stress reduction, the jester you probably won't bring for the stress reduction. You don't need anybody to reduce stress or you shouldn't unless you have a really bad time if you're just doing basic dungeon crawling. She's that good. So um so with that, I'm not going to go over a lot of other things, but what I'll tell you is focus on her strengths. If you don't have these trinkets, let's say you don't have the meta trinkets, focus on additional crit for her. Focus on trap disarming, maybe speed. You can throw some dodge in there because her dodge is very good. Um, and uh, melee damage are all great things for her. She doesn't have the greatest HP. If she gets hit, it hurts. Um, but by running the uh, Shadow Fade, normally turn two, she has 30 dodge. So she doesn't always have a, a ton to worry about. But if she does get hit, hit with hit, she does get hit with Tree Branch Shakedown or something like that that's going to be a high damage roll and she gets hit with it it's it could be ugly so that's one of her drawbacks but outside of low hp um and she doesn't do a lot of top line damage unless she crits i personally don't think she has a lot of minuses and her strengths far outweigh her minuses so with that what you see here as far as camping skills this is what i'd recommend that you're going to bring i didn't even unlock all the other, these other ones um because i don't think they're very strong you're not going to use night moves that often. You'll probably use Gallows Humor almost every run. Um, unless you have something better as far as stress reduction. But that's pretty solid. Um, and Snuffbox, hopefully you don't have to worry about that. Unless you're running Warrens or Weld. You shouldn't have too many disease opportunities. But that's it. Uh, she's amazing. And she's one of the most fun characters in the game to play right now. Is what I think. So... Hopefully this helps you guys and you've enjoyed it. I, I do have more of the Darkest Dungeon guides coming. I did want to do hers today a little bit differently just to kind of talk through why I feel she's the best as well as give you a guide on what I'm using. But what you see here is the meta that I run. Sometimes I'll change out, depending on the zone I'm going to run in, um, I'll change out Feather Crystal occasionally. Or, you know, some of the other trinkets, like you have Ancestor's Pen, which is very strong, but you get the additional stress. Um... Uh, you know, you could run any of those and really be be good to go. So again, focus on really strengthening her strengths. So speed, dodge, crit, melee damage, all those really make a huge difference with her. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. And uh, enjoy playing the Grave Robber. She's amazing. She's a blast to play. Um, and enjoy saving all that money and, and get the uh, stress reduction. I'll see you in the next video.